Hi there, Rob here with another power learning solution tip for you. This time we're going to be talking about how to make your documents more digitally accessible. Now, if you're like me and you work in the education sector, then you work with a lot of documents that are intended for your students, or you may receive and grade a lot of papers from uh, teacher candidates or from graduate education students. And if you're in this sector, it really behooves us to make sure that we're doing anything that we can uh, to promote inclusion for all of our learners and all of our colleagues and to do the simple things that we can do to help make our documents uh, or anything that we work with as digitally accessible as possible. So what we're gonna focus on here today is two basic steps that we can take to make our documents uh, as digitally accessible as possible. These are relatively easy steps. There are things that uh, I didn't always know about, but I've come to learn about and they make my life a lot easier. They also make uh, things a lot easier for my students, especially those students who have visual impairments. So what I'm going to do is actually start with a sample document that I have. This is one that uh, I wrote a number of years ago. And at first glance, things might look OK, but there are some inconsistencies throughout. If you look at my section headings, you'll see that uh, they might look fine at first, but as we get further into the document, they're inconsistent. I actually have uh, some different styles in here for my headings. I not only want to make sure that these styles are visually consistent, but I actually want to make them digitally accessible. Most uh, digital screen reader applications, such as JAWS, for example, or the accessibility tools that are built into a lot of operating systems these days, will allow users, like visually impaired users, to quickly navigate through your document by tabbing or switching through the section headers. But if you look at my document, I've actually got this formatted manually as normal text. It looks fine and it looks uh, looks pretty. It uh, complies with APA standards, but it doesn't meet digital accessibility requirements because they're not tagged as headings. You'll see up here it's tagged as normal text. And the problem is that if I don't have it tagged as a heading, now my readers can't quickly navigate through the document. Their software is actually going to read the entire document to them and they can't quickly find the place that they need to go. So I'm going to start with tip number one, which is how to format the uh, section headers in your document and make them a little more accessible to your readers. So I'll use APA formatting uh, for my section headers. Your formatting might be different if you're using APA or MLA or Chicago style or what, or even uh, a publisher's custom style. But you should be using the formatting styles up here on the toolbar to actually tag these as headings. So in APA, your title and your uh, first section header are both going to be heading level one. Some documents you might actually use the, uh, the title format, but we're going to use heading level one. Now, if I look at heading level one here, it doesn't actually match. You can see that it's changing the, the font on this. So what I want to do first is highlight my first bit of text that I want to tag as heading level one, and then right click on heading one up here, the formatting toolbar, and I'm going to click on update heading one to match selection. Now it's going to do that to all of my heading level ones throughout the document. If I scroll further down the document, I'll see that there are some that have now been updated that were previously in a different format. I know that uh, references was one of those that was tagged as heading level one. So that should now be updated. It is. It's tagged as heading one. It matches that style. So I want to go through my document, find all of my heading level ones and change them to that uh, to that. So introduction. Heading level one. This heading here, heading level one. Now I need to find uh, my first instance of a level two header, which is this one here. It's already formatted according to APA standards. It's left aligned and in bold and in the same font as the rest of the document. But again, it's normal text. So I will right click on heading level two, update to match selection. And now I can just go through the rest of my document and make sure that all of my heading level ones and heading level twos are properly tagged. And you can repeat these steps for heading level three or any other heading that you have. This is a heading one. This is a heading two. They're already properly formatted. 
again, everything is now formatted uh, nicely. And this document is easy to navigate for anyone who's using a digital screen reader application. Now, my second trick that I'm going to show you, my second tip is working with images that you have embedded in your document. I have a number of images embedded. The first one is this one here. Now, I wrote this a number of years ago. I had this copied from a web page that I had created and I had it embedded as, uh, as an image file. I would never do this now. This is a table that's easy to set up in a Word document and I would actually type this text out as a table. The reason for that is because all of this text here embedded as an image is not machine readable. Therefore, anyone who's got a visual impairment and who is using a digital screen reader cannot access this text. So I would actually take the time to redevelop this. However, failing that, if you want to make your document accessible, you need to make sure that you have an alt tag on your image. Years ago, alt tags were used in web browsers so that they would display some text if your connection was slow and you couldn't download the image. They now serve that digital accessibility purpose and it's easy to fix. You simply right click on the image and you find the edit alt text option and type in a couple of sentences to describe what's in the image. This table lists questions related to the four categories for the CSAM framework. All right, that now is done. That alt text is on that image. And what's going to happen is if anyone is using a digital screen reader and they get to this image, the screen reader will actually read out that alt text for them so that at least they know what the image is about, even if they can't read all the text in it. This is especially helpful when you have uh, graphical images such as these. So again, I would click on the image, edit alt text, and I would add some text here. And this one would be Cole's frame model. And I would go through the rest of my document and add all of those in. Two simple steps that anyone can use to quickly make your document as accessible as possible. The nice thing is that if you were to save this document out now as a PDF file rather than just a Word document, it's going to maintain that heading structure. The other nice thing about this, I said that these tricks make my life a lot easier too, is that I can quickly now add a table of contents. And I'm going to put this up on this page up here, force a page break, and I can go to the uh, to uh, my formatting tools here. Under the references tab, table of contents, I can pick the style that I want. Uh, so I will pick this style here. It adds in my table of contents based on the heading structure that I already had in. So it makes your life a lot easier in that way, but it also makes life a lot easier for any of your potential readers who may have a visual impairment. Your document is now digitally accessible.